Welcome back. Today I'm continuing work on this 1976 Galant Coupe. Okay, so in the last video, I finished work on the, the bonnet, so the bonnet's now good inside and out. Previously, I fitted this 2.6 litre Astron uh, engine and gearbox out of a Sigma. So that's all installed in there now. I uh, made up a gearbox cross member and all that for that, so it's ready to go. I've um, done a bunch of rust repair on this car. The rear quarters were, were shot on both sides. There was rust in the back. Also done a taillight conversion. It used to be uh, GD rear end, and now I've got GC. And the mission for today, or for this weekend, is going to be to continue with the bodywork, get it to a point where um, all of the, um, the filler work's done, all the sanding's done, and stretch target would be to get it into primer. So let's crack and crack into that, see where we go. <laughs> So I've already put this car in a lot of in a lot of spots. It's already been back to bare metal, and I've done a lot of filler work, quite a few spots already. So for tidying up, what I like to do is I use the the DA sander. This is just a cheapy Ryobi, got it from Bunnings, and then you use these um, little DA discs. I use eighty for for shaping the filler, and then to go over the top it with extra primer. I'd, I'd finish with a two forty or or something like that. There's, you can get a 120 as well, which I think I've got over there, but I've got some fresh, fresh sanding pads here. Got a DA and plenty to do. So let's rip in. Well, that was pretty interesting. Um, initially, I started with the, the, the DA sander with 80 grit, and I was just cleaning, just tidying up around the edges here and around the uh, edge of the wheel arch here. And then as I got onto this bit here, just in front of the fuel filler um, with the DA, as I was sanding off this, this etch primer, there was like traces of um, surface rust underneath the primer between the panel. You seem surprised. Is it possible there was surface rust on the panel and then someone put etch primer over the top? I don't know why anyone would ever do that. But I don't think that's what happened. I, I suspect something else is going on. Maybe it's not even rust. It's just this brownie stuff. So I then got the wire wheel out on the, on the angle grinder, this guy, deadly machine. I got that guy out and I was um, tidying up around here around the, um, the rear quarter window, just to make sure there was nothing untoward going on, and there's not, it's, it's fine. Um, it's lead fill here from factory, which is good, and all the rest of it's fine. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, what I'm gonna do is get the, the DA, um, actually I might get a stripper disc on an angle grinder, and just take this section back, because I, I did some exploration with the, um, 
with the DA and I couldn't find it anywhere else because some the thing that's going on here is some of this etch primer is mine, some of it was done previously and I'm not even sure which bits are mine anymore because I've done that many rust repairs and sort of other bits and pieces and I've etch primed it sort of after I've done the repairs. So I don't know. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll get the angle grinder um, with the stripper disc on it, just come bring all this back, make sure there's nothing crazy going on that I'm, that I'm not aware of, um, then finish it off with the DA uh, and yeah, get on with it. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting to, to point that out. I've never seen that before. I can't ever recall taking back a primer and then having what appears to be a dusty, rusty powder on it between that and the metal. So I don't know. So I've got to get these, these strikers off. Because this is going to be a colour change. This car was originally white. Um, I don't think it's going to be white. Colour's yet, not yet decided actually. It's an interesting thing. Um, yeah, there's a lot of discussion happening about what the, what the colour of this car is going to be. Um, I guess white is one of the possibilities, but I think it's very unlikely that this car is going to end up white. So because of the colour change, uh, all the, the door jams and the boot opening and the um, all that's going to need to be painted. Um, and, you know, you don't want to have colour over the top of your striker. Just looks crap. So all this has got to come out. Um, and these are packed with shims. You can see the... There's two shims from factory behind this one. Um, when they assemble, when these cars are first assembled, that's how they they get the gaps right and get everything nice. They have uh, shims that go, they'll go between the striker and the body and between the hinge and the body. And, you know, you can, you can pack maybe one or two shims here and one shim on the upper hinge, two shims on the lower hinge sort of thing and just get the, the door sitting where you want it to move, sitting where you want it to sit, so that all the gaps are good and it all looks neat and tidy. And the same with the with the hanging panels, the front guards and, and the boot and all that. They they're all shimmed up to so those gaps are correct too. So the back's actually not too bad. I've done the you can see where I've done the tail light conversion, and then there was some um, some holes here that I filled in with weld where the old um, tail lights mounted up. So I just need to tidy this area up here. Yeah, I need to get the, I need to grab a tail light and see, I can't remember how much, how far out the, the tail light assemblies come because this here, that's low just just there where I've where I've filled it in I don't know what I've done but that's a it's a little low in there and when I've bogged it up I've put nowhere near enough bog where it needs to be it we shall double our efforts needs quite a bit there so I'm not sure if that gets covered up or not so I'm gonna go grab a tail light and check it out Right, so the tail light doesn't cover up any of this at all. Yeah, so I need to need to come back with some some more mousse and build that area there up. Top's fine. Yeah, they're both they're both fine. Yeah, that's as, 
It's a real low spot just there. It's nasty. Okay. Better to discover now. But I'll stay the course. I'll get the um I'll get the angle grinder tidy up down there, get some of this paint off, uh, then I'll come and give this a bog up. Okay, so stripping this back, this side's good, except for a rust spot just there. So that's gonna to need to get cut out. There's a little low here where it's been hit. Important to remember, of course, that the bumper bar runs all the way along there. So all of this behind here is covered up. So I'm not too worried about that. This is where the number plate mounts up. So this tab here was was bent down, I'm not sure what's happened there in the past, but um, this part here along the bottom, that's visible. Um, I call it the beaver panel, I'm not really sure what it's called, but in previous videos I've talked about it a little bit, but this whole side of the back has taken a hit before, um, and I think the repair is pretty good, The gen like you can see they're not factory welds, the general shapes there, the problem I've got at the moment is that the beaver, it's floppy, but I think it's always probably floppy, but it's out of shape on this side. So um, this piece here, it needs to sit, it needs to sit like that. I'm not sure if you can really tell, but it's hard to do, hard to really show, but it's, it's kind of sagged down a little bit here, and I think that's because it's taken, it's a little bit out of shape there. So I think the fix is, what, it, what I'll fix, I'm gonna to have to introduce quite a bit of heat here when I weld over here. So I'll cut this out, fix up that rust, then I'll worry about the overall shape of it, because along this side, even though it's got the rust, it's nice and straight, and it's, it's the shape that it needs to be. This side, not so much. It's kind of sagged down in, in that bit just there. But I think it's, it's not a complicated fix. I think it's just a case of getting this bit here down a bit more, and that'll tighten this up and pull it back up like that. Just I want it to look straight the whole way along. Like worst case scenario, I'll get a piece of steel strapping and weld it on the inside just to hold the whole thing rigid. Not ideal, not really the way to do it, um, but it'll get the same result. But what I'm planning on doing is you know, I'll fix that up and then muck around with this and try and try and get it straight. <laughs> Patch panels made just here. Just try and hold that in place with the magnet. And tuck it in place.
Okay, so I've had a bit of a success here. There was a, this is the, the bit that had been smashed in in the past. Um, I've got it straight along here. There was, here it had been heavily bogged. Um, this was all, this was very high here. It's actually still just a little bit higher. Still need to hammer and dolly it down a bit. But this here was really low. And I just, I was just belting on this bit here along this line. Just there. And that's pulled this back down this in a bit so all of this was filled with bog previously i've ground the bog away and now it's not bad it's look it's still a little bit ripply it's going to need a bog a layer of bog to get out some of the highs and lows but it's pulled it's straightened this up so the issue i had before was because this was distorted here this here was like floppy and in the middle here it was it was bowed down um, now that I now that I've beaten this straight, and this has come out, this is now pulled back in, and so now all the way along, it's leveled down the bottom here. So when you're looking at the car from from behind, you're not going to have this ripple thing going on. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's a good little win. So what I need to do is this needs um, a skimmer filler along here. And then where I've done the welding, uh, down this side here, that needs a skimmer filler as well. And around these tail light modifications, uh, that needs a skimmer filler as well. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Okay. Time to mix up some mousse. pretty late here it's uh I think it's about 9 p.m. and it's freezing cold I don't know if there's steam coming out of my mouth but I am shaking with the chills but the show must go on I'd like to get this done tonight to give it a chance to, to give the, the bog the moose a good chance to set up overnight so in the morning I can come back sand it out and continue on rather than having to do it in the morning then wait because it'll be even colder in the morning it'll be zero degrees or one degree Celsius in the shed so I'd like to get it get it hard tonight so tomorrow morning it's straight into straight into business stuff's almost frozen Probably should have needed the hardener before I. Anyway, too late now. Of course, the keys to mix it to a, a nice consistency. like that. This thing can come in. And spread it on.
obviously the target here would be to get enough of this on and set up so that there's no reapplication required tomorrow after sanding it out. I think there's very little chance of, of that given my skill set. I'd say that there'll be another go at this at least, but that's not the target. The target would be that it's one and done. Okay, well that sucks. I'm not sure what you could tell from the time lapse I had there. I was sanding, sanding on the back of the car and I think the, this DA sander, this dual action sander has, has died. Um, it's a Ryobi branded one. Um, I've been riding this thing hard for years. The date on it says it's a 2018, um, so it's possible I've been using this abusing this thing for for six years or five or six years pretty I, I use it a lot basically for body work it's it's my go-to um, but it's it's got no torque so I had it on the back there and it just wouldn't spin up so for example it's it's not turning so you crank the even if you crank the power on it still hasn't got any it's just got, it's got nothing. It's a, it's a real shame. Uh, I've just had a look on the shelf and I don't have another electric one. I've got an air one, but nah, I don't like using air tools too much. I only use the air tools for, for painting now. Um, so that's a real bugger. I'd planned, the, the plan for this video was to sand out the other side of the car sand out the roof and get the whole lot into etch primer. Um, but I can't do that now. So that's, that's a bit of a bugger. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna have to pivot and I don't wanna leave all this in bare metal and uncovered. So I guess what I'll do, cause I haven't got a, it's, I haven't got a hardware store anywhere nearby where I can go and get one of them. So I'll have to grab one uh, later. But I guess the pivot will be, I'm going to, um, I'll get this into etch. So I'll, yeah, cover, get this side. And I guess half of the back, I can get that into etch primer. Um, I can get the wire wheel down here and tidy up this gutter, but, I can't etch prime the roof yet. I need to, I need to um, sand the roof back first. So, yeah, I guess I'll just give all this this side a, a coat of etch primer, 
and that'll be it. Like I said, bit of a bugger, but it's life. I guess I probably should have a second, a second tool if it's um, something that's so important, but whatever. All good. Give it a clean off and get priming. So before I put any any primer down on this, I've got the old wax and grease remover here. Just want to make sure there's no contaminants on any of this. This has been sitting here for a long time. While I've been doing rust repairs and I've worked on a, you know, dozens of other things in the shed while this shell's been sitting here and I've had engines in and out and chainsaws and all sorts of stuff going on. So you don't know any of that um, oil or, or grease or contaminants get on the paint here, get on the body here. Once you go and put a primer over the top of it, it won't, um, it won't bond properly and because the etch primer's the first step of the process. You really, you don't want to have your whole job compromised from the very beginning. So a couple of minutes spent with some wax and grease removers, a good investment. Super happy with that. Etch primer's on. Still wet, just, just laid it out now. Went on okay, the gun I was using was a piece of crap, $20 hardware store gun, but I use that for all the etch primers. Um, but yeah, it went on fine. Good coverage, which is good, and the best part of it is it signifies that this, this side of the car, albeit from A pillar to the back, this side of the car is done. So all it needs, and looking at it now in the light, along the lines, it looks straight. Really happy with that. Um, so all this side's going to need is high build and then top coats. So look, it was a, a bugger about the DA sander. You know, it changed my plans for sure, but with um, with disappointment comes opportunity, as they say. So the opportunity I had was to get this side into primer, um, and then instead of probably rushing through the rest of it, through this side and over here and the roof, um, instead of rushing through all that to get it, uh, to get it finished off, I'll go and get another DA sander from go pick one up from Bunnings um, and then I'll have more time to work through it a bit more slowly and probably get a better result so that's the opportunity here but um, no super happy with that actually it's very satisfying when you see it all in in one color even if it's just a small section but um, no it's good news all right that's it for uh 
for this episode. Thanks heaps for, for watching, for tuning in. I've really been enjoying all of the, the comments and the support um, that I've been getting. So thanks heaps for all that. All that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Hopefully I've got a new DA Sander with me and, and continue on. <laughs>